The Journey of Islam to Indonesia A Cultural Transformation The spread of Islam to Indonesia is a captivating story of adventurous traders, dedicated missionaries, and strategic political maneuvers that transformed the archipelago from its ancient roots to a vibrant center of Islamic culture. This remarkable journey unfolded between the 13th and 16th centuries, reshaping the spiritual and cultural landscape of Southeast Asia's largest nation. I request the viewers not to forget to subscribe the channel after watching the video. Before the advent of Islam, Indonesia was a tapestry of Hinduism, Buddhism, and animistic beliefs. The archipelago was dominated by powerful Hindu-Buddhist kingdoms such as Srivijaya in Sumatra and Majapahit in Java. These kingdoms not only controlled vast territories but also cultivated rich cultural and religious traditions. Magnificent temples like Borobudur and Prambanan are grand testaments to the advanced architecture, art, and spiritual devotion of these early civilizations. The spiritual life of Indonesians was deeply intertwined with rituals, festivals, and a pantheon of gods and spirits that influenced every aspect of daily life. The Hindu-Buddhist influence shaped not only the religious practices, but also the social and political structures of Indonesian societies. The arrival of Islam in Indonesia can be traced primarily through the activities of Muslim traders who frequented the region's bustling trade routes. From as early as the 7th century, Muslim merchants from the Arabian Peninsula, Persia, India, and China established extensive maritime trade networks that connected the Islamic world with Southeast Asia. These traders brought not only goods, but also their cultural and religious practices. Key trading ports, such as Aceh, in northern Sumatra and Malacca on the Malay Peninsula, became critical hubs for the exchange of goods and ideas. The lucrative spice trade, in particular, made Indonesia an attractive destination for Muslim traders, who played a significant role in introducing Islam to the local population. However, the spread of Islam was not merely a byproduct of trade. It was significantly propelled by the efforts of Sufi missionaries who were instrumental in the Islamization of Indonesia. Sufism, with its mystical approach and adaptability to local customs and traditions, resonated deeply with the Indonesian people. Sufi teachers and orders, tarikas, like the Qadiriya, Shatariya, and Naqshbandiya, established religious schools, pesantren, and spread Islamic teachings through personal example and peaceful proselytizing. These Sufis often incorporated elements of local beliefs and practices into their teachings, facilitating the acceptance of Islam among the indigenous populations. This syncretic approach allowed Islam to take root in a predominantly Hindu-Buddhist and animist society, making the new religion appear less foreign and more relatable. Another crucial factor in the spread of Islam in Indonesia was the conversion of local rulers. Many rulers adopted Islam for political and economic reasons, recognizing the benefits of aligning themselves with the powerful Muslim trading networks. The conversion of a ruler often led to the conversion of his subjects, as the population typically followed the faith of their leader. The adoption of Islam by influential leaders helped establish the religion as a dominant force in the region. Islamic sultanates, such as the Sultanate of Samudera Pasai in northern Sumatra, the Sultanate of Malacca, and later the Sultanate of Mataram and Banten, played key roles in spreading Islam. These sultanates not only adopted Islamic law, sharia, and governance, but also became centers of Islamic learning and culture, further entrenching the religion in their territories. The establishment of Islamic schools, madrasas and pesantren, and the dissemination of Islamic literature in the Malay language were also significant in spreading Islamic knowledge and practices. These institutions became centers of learning where students were taught not only religious sciences, but also subjects such as philosophy, science, and literature integrating Islamic teachings with broader knowledge. The use of the Malay language, which was widely spoken in the archipelago, helped make Islamic teachings accessible to a broad audience, facilitating the spread of the religion.
intermarriage between Muslim traders and local women further facilitated the spread of Islam. These unions often resulted in the integration of Islamic practices into local communities, as the children of these marriages were typically raised as Muslims. Over time, this contributed to the gradual increase of the Muslim population in the region. The decline of major Hindu-Buddhist kingdoms such as Majapahit in the 15th century created a power vacuum that Muslim sultanates filled, further enabling the spread of Islam. As these sultanates gained political and social influence, there was a gradual shift away from Hindu-Buddhist traditions towards Islamic culture and practices. This transition was marked by significant changes in the social, political, and cultural landscape of Indonesia. The arrival of Islam brought profound changes to Indonesian culture. The introduction of Islamic education, art, and architecture led to the development of a distinct Indonesian Islamic culture. Mosques replaced temples as centers of community life, and Islamic festivals and traditions became integral parts of Indonesian society. Islamic law and governance influenced the legal and political systems, introducing new concepts of justice and administration. The spread of Islam also brought changes in language, literature, and social customs, creating a unique blend of Islamic and Indonesian traditions. Despite these changes, the process of Islamization in Indonesia was generally gradual and peaceful. The ability of Islam to blend with local customs and traditions helped mitigate potential conflicts and facilitated a relatively smooth transition. This syncretic approach allowed for the coexistence of Islamic practices with remnants of Hindu-Buddhist and animist traditions, creating a rich and diverse cultural tapestry. Towards conclusion of this video, I again remind you to like, share, and comment, and also subscribe the channel. The spread of Islam to Indonesia was a multifaceted process influenced by trade, missionary work, political change, and cultural adaptation. This transformation brought about a new era of spiritual and cultural unity. Blending the rich heritage of Indonesia's past with the vibrant practices of Islam, as the world's largest Muslim-majority country today, Indonesia stands as a testament to the enduring legacy of this historical journey, a unique blend of tradition and modernity that continues to evolve and inspire. The spread of Islam in Indonesia not only reshaped the religious landscape, but also left an indelible mark on the cultural, social, and political fabric of the nation, creating a legacy that endures to this day. Thank you for watching. For